Okay, uh, first of all, disclaimer. Uh, production value for this video is gonna be like nil. So I have like no time. And that's why you're probably gonna hear dogs barking and it's all right, it's all right. I climbed back on my roof because this piece of kit right here is freaking amazing. It's the Talavest Smartcom. All right, so let me take you a look around what we have here. Uh, the closest primary market is Milwaukee. It is that way. It is about 42 miles. It is one edge and as you can see directly through a whole bunch of trees. My second best market is Madison. It is that way. It is line of sight. However, it's about 57 miles to that area before repack. Um, this was definitely my strongest market after they repacked. Seemed like they moved towers and stuff not as good all the time another market also about 41 miles rockford is that way uh not a major media market but has all the major networks represented so there you go production value dog that wants to come in when there's nobody in the house because i'm on the roof that's what you get here on my youtube channel anyway so there you go and then the holy grail this way 72 miles to chicago I am a bear fan living in Packer land. This is what I'm after because I want to watch my football games and not be stuck watching the Packers on days where the Bears and Packers conflict with each other. So, previously on this direct dish former satellite uh, mounting was a Televis uh, Dat Boss LR Mix, which you see right there. Uh, great antenna, picked it up about six years ago, I want to say. So this is the first version of this antenna, not the newer one, where they've spiced up the elements a bit. Um, so what I had up here was a rotor, and I went to check the rotor uh, before the football season here, and it was dead because it was like seven years old because that's what happens with rotors. I was gonna buy a new rotor when I came across this fantastic piece of kit right there instead. I said, hey, it would be nice not to have a rotor because you're constantly pointing it in different directions. You have to retune every single time you do that. Uh, it, the DVR has no idea what direction the antenna is pointing, so it will record totally blank stations sometimes if it's not pointing the way it's expecting to. Uh, rotors are a pain and they die <laughs> like mine did so i'm like hey get a combiner and what i'll do is i'll get a new antenna this is the channel master 4228 hd i will point that towards madison like it is right now i will take the talvez lr mix and point that towards chicago because it's a nice yagi antenna i should have my best shot at chicago there i did get chicago on the rotor just not always the best. Um, and maybe I will get Madison and Chicago. I'll be good to go. Well, folks, this thing is utterly freaking amazing because despite the 4228 here being pointed towards Madison, out that way, it is getting Madison, it is getting Milwaukee, and it is getting Rockford. Now, on its own, it could get rockford a little bit um and milwaukee hardly at all but with this puppy here it gets them incredibly well and on top of it using this with the lr mix has brought chicago in incredibly well so let's go take a look at those things when i hop off the roof welcome inside again Huge production value. <laughs> Here's my sheet of paper. Shout out to Rabbit Ears. Uh, I just found Rabbit Ears. I used a different site before this, and Rabbit Ears is way better. So uh, hats off to those guys doing the Lord's work there, uh, posting antenna stuff to the internet. But for those of us who have figured out, it is the way to fly. So anyway, so let's uh, visualize what was previously antenna hell here. So on the map there, you can see to the northeast would usually be my best shot, which is Milwaukee. Um, in reality, it isn't really because it is one edge and, like I showed you up on the roof, directly through a huge line of trees. 
including black walnuts, Norway maples, big stuff, lots of foliage. So uh, in the summertime, fun times. Uh, to the southeast is Chicago. You can see that is my holy grail as a Bear fan in Packer land. I want to watch the Bears game if they are lined up against the Packers or as is want to happen. The Milwaukee station carries whatever game they want that isn't the Bears game even if the Packers aren't playing. That stinks. And I don't want to pay for the big NFL package just to watch the Bears. So I'd rather use my antenna. Uh, so there's uh, Chicago southeast. Madison is northwest. That was pre before the repack my strongest signal because it is line of sight, but it's 70. No, how many miles is Madison? Madison is 56 miles to the northwest. So it's, you know, another 15 miles versus 42 for Milwaukee. Uh, Rockford is close also at 41. And then Chicago is 72 miles away. So, uh, Madison and Rockford, not huge major media markets. They do have all the major stations, but uh, their signals don't tend to be as good as they are not major media markets, whereas Milwaukee and Chicago have stronger ones. Chicago obviously has the strongest ones. They put those antennas on the Sears Tower and stuff. Uh, so that is the situation and why I needed a rotor before. With the rotor, Chicago came in okay most of the time. I could get the main channels I want. But the rotor's uh, just a pain, repointing, retuning, et cetera, et cetera. So when I set up the antennas, I was hoping to get Madison and Chicago, and instead I get all of it. So the 4228 pointed is pointed at Madison. That 180 degrees that they advertise is legit, at least with the SmartCom. So before the SmartCom, I could get a little bit of Rockford pointed at Madison. I did not get Milwaukee on it. Uh, with the SmartCom, it is absolutely amazing. I get all that stuff. So my problem now is these are all the dots of what I do get is <laughs> arranging all the antennas and dealing with the stupid uh, tuner that doesn't want to see stations that are actually there. So those dots represent every station I get with no trouble whatsoever. So the ones that don't have dots are generally because there's a conflict with the tuner with another station on that same frequency. So uh, further down the list here, WGN in Chicago is on 19 uh, and WMTV in Madison is also on 19. WMTV wins no matter which antenna I pick. Uh, it wants to go to that station. I cannot get it to pick up WGN. So stuff like that happens. You know, if they're on the same channel, they're on the same channel. Even if you have an antenna pointed that way, you might not be able to split them up. So most of what you see here that I don't have is because of situations like that. Something that is crazy on the other side of this paper is WBBM in Chicago. For whatever reason, they are the lone holdout on VHF in Chicago, channel 12. So high VHF, 72 miles. I do pick up that channel at about 30, uh, 30. I have no business picking up that channel. That is the LR mix that's picking up that channel. Uh, so, you know, again, this is just a crazy piece of kit. So we're just going to take a quick stop in the garage here so I can show you the other component to the system. So the SmartCom itself ideally goes on the antenna mass. So then you can have up to three antennas feeding the SmartCom. And then this power supply here is actually a power supply and a control unit. So this lead here is going out to the antenna. That is a long run it's like more than 50 feet it goes around to the back of the house to a cable box that's been repurposed and then it goes up to the antenna mass through there it is going through a splitter at that cable box because i have two runs for the upstairs that go from that cable box and i have two runs inside the house including my main run there that goes to the man cave as you can see labeled so previously here i had one of these which is a channel master distribution amplifier because even with the this Televis power supply looks exactly like the one for the LR mix except that it's not it just looks the same 
Uh, that was a preamp, and so I already had power set up to go to there. So you have to be careful with that. You need power pass if you're going to split. Uh, so it is running power to there, and I did plug it in um, to check it that it was working before I got up on the roof. And then you only have one lead out. I didn't really, I wasn't using one of these other inside runs, so I just disconnected it. Uh, if I was going to need that run, I would just run a regular splitter here because pulling uh, the signal distributor out, which was required before, I could not get a picture inside the house before without that. Uh, I don't need that anymore with the SmartCom. So it comes to here. It goes out to the man cave, which is the primary run that I need this for. You also control it from here. There's a button there that you long press to have it completely rescanned. So be careful with that because it will lose everything and rescan it again. Uh, within the app, you can save settings and stuff like that. Or you can short press it where it will just rebalance. So it will run through all the current settings that it has and just control the boost on each individual channel. That is crazy. So a lot of preamps uh, are just going to do a general. Hey, everything gets boosted. That doesn't work all the time. It's a bad idea, actually, a lot of times. This crazy thing will uh, do boost to each individual channel. So from here, you can hook up the app. I'm not covering the app here. There's other videos on there looking at the app. It's simple to use. You assign the different channels to the antennas if you want to override something, which I needed to do in a couple of cases because I wanted the Chicago station. So if there was a Chicago station on the same channel, I would put it on the LR mix so that I got that Chicago station. Uh, but that is a look at the power supply. Uh, let's finish it up by looking at some of my results, the actual signal levels. So the Televis SmartCom, I can't recommend. So this is, you know, one of the Madison stations here. Just if you go through these, you know, it's just absolutely crazy what's going on here. There's Milwaukee, WTMJ at 56. This is crazy right here. Chicago, WMAQ, 55. That station is 72 miles away. It is two edge, 72 miles away. And you can see I'm peaking at like 63. I believe this is where the SmartCom is doing its thing. It will dynamically tune channels and I think does a fantastic job of it. Here's six, that's a Milwaukee station, 64. This is, six is, no, yeah, six is Milwaukee. The antenna is not even pointed in this direction. It is pointed at Madison and I'm getting 63. So I wasn't expecting to get the Milwaukee stations and I am. Uh, WLS channel 7 ABC down in Chicago, 72 miles again, 76. 76, 72 miles away, through trees, two edge, absolutely insane. So, uh, you know, that's channel 11, the PBS station down in Chicago. You know, they don't have as much horsepower as the big guys do, but I'm still getting 48, 50, and a decent picture that you can see there. So absolutely insane. So uh, the Talvis SmartCom, go get it. Even if you don't have a rotor, uh, this is a fantastic piece of kit. I am not doing a video on the app. There is an app that connects to it that you can program. You can tell it what channels you want to be on what antenna. You can tell it to rescan. You can tell it to re-optimize. You can manually set the gain on each individual channel. It is an amazing piece of kit. It is not cheap, but it's about the same price as a rotor. And I don't think it's going to break after six years like the rotor did. So go pick it up. Absolutely fantastic. Thanks for tolerating my low production value. <laughs> and I hope you have a great time uh, setting up your next project where you're trying to get out there and uh, pick up some of the stations for free. Look forward to uh, uh, hearing your thoughts in the comments and see you soon. Bye-bye.